ready for the word this morning? Yes. Well, will you please welcome to the platform with me today, Ashley Ray. Yeah. Ashley and I are going to uh, share the word together today. We just felt like this was one of those words where uh, it would really, really come across well if, if, if it's given in tandem. So, um, of course, Ashley's my youngest daughter, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to have her here with me. We're going to be reading today starting in 1 Corinthians 12. So if you will turn to 1 Corinthians 12, or you can follow on the wall. The scripture would be on the wall behind me. I'm reading from the New King James Version this morning. 1 Corinthians 12. And we're going to read verses 12 through 23. And Paul writes, For as the body is one, and has many members, but all the members of that body being, being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them in the body, just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed, there are many members, yet one body. And I cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the, to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. Lord, we just come before you today, Lord God, and we thank you for the reading of your word, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just thank you um, that you've given us this opportunity to give this message together, Lord God. Lord, we pray that we would not be seen today, Lord God, but that you would be heard through everything that we say, Lord God. <coughs> Lord, I pray that um, the enemy would be silenced today in our minds, Lord God, and that we would be able to not have any distractions, Lord God, but just soak in everything that you have for us today, Lord God. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my dear brother. Well, today I'm excited as we, we kick, we're going to start a new series today on honor. And we're going to speak to you about establishing a culture of honor. Honor is defined as to regard or treat someone with respect and admiration. Honor means to give special recognition to or to show reverence. Honor is something that most of us know we should show to others, yet many times we struggle to do so. So we're going to look at what the Bible has to say about honor. And we want to highlight some of the ways that we're to honor God as well as ways we're to honor one another. You know, I think it's fair to say that in our Western culture, our Western world culture, we do not honor others as we should. Whereas people from Eastern countries uh, and eastern regions of the world, such as Africa, Asia, etc., have established, uh, they have an established culture of honor that is found in many of his people groups. So the first question we must answer is this, who are we to show honor to? Who are we to honor? The second question is, how do we do that? And the second question, believe it or not, may be easier to answer than the first. 
Because there are some people that we feel like deserves no honor from us. We're okay with giving honor to people that we we highly esteem. But there are some people, people in your life, and you know who they are. (laughs) You know who they are. That you feel like should not be honored in the least. But we have a problem. Say, what's the problem, Pastor? Thank you for asking that question. (laughs) We have a problem. The problem is 1 Peter 2.17 says, honor all people. Now, what do you think Peter meant by honor all people? Huh? Huh? You think he meant honor all people? If the Bible really means that we're to honor all people, then everyone, regardless of who they are, ought to be shown some level of respect by you. And if the Bible is telling us to honor all people, we should make every effort to do so And especially honor those we believe deserves it the least. Those who've hurt us. Those who've caused us pain. Those that we know are mean. Huh? Evil. Ruthless. It's the people that we think are not deserving of honor and respect that we have to be more diligent to give honor to. That is, if Peter truly meant honor all people. Psalm 139, 13 through 14 says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know that full well. And when you think about someone knitting something together, you think about the time that it takes them. And for those of you who knit, you know sometimes it could take you days, it could take you weeks, It can take you months, and for some people, it might take them years to knit something so beautiful. And when God created us, he used that same delicacy for all of us. When we show honor to others, we're choosing to recognize and respect God's creation. And today, we're going to talk about just that and give you four points that deal with creating a culture of honor. So the first point on creating a culture of honor is above all honor God. Above all honor God. As I listened and and worshiped the Lord with you this morning, I was somewhat taken back in a good way by the songs that was chosen for today. They were all songs of honor. And listen. Listen. We don't broadcast what we're preaching. So it's not like we plan or they plan their worship service around what the new is going to be speaking. It's just what God is doing in our midst. Revelation 4 describes an amazing scene in heaven. A scene where the angels of God are praising and worshiping him. Living creatures who do not rest day or night, but they cry out, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, to the one who lives forever and ever, it says the 24 elders, they fall down before him. They cast their thrones before him, their crowns before him, and they worship him who seated on the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, Mm -hmm. 
to receive honor and to receive power. Everything and everyone in heaven and on earth is to praise and honor God. He is the creator and the sustainer of all that lives. And the honor that we give someone should be something that originates from the heart. It should be an indicator of the value we personally place on them and our relationship with them. How much do you value your life in God? Or how much do you value God in your life? How much do you value the life that he's given you? The level to which you value your relationship with God will be reflected in how you honor him. Think about the things that you have in your life. The people you love the most. Your home, your car, your job. Whatever you have in your bank accounts or in your retirement, whatever it may be, et cetera, et cetera. How do you honor and protect those things? The things that are most valued to you are the things that you honor the most. Shouldn't God be at the top of that list? Yes. Of all the people, all the places, all the things that you love and honor, none should be honored more, more than the Lord. Above all, honor God. Yes. So how do we honor God? We honor him by reverencing who he is. We honor God by giving to him the highest praise and the most heartfelt worship. We honor God by believing his word. Believing what he said. We honor God by living a life of faith in him. And that includes how we give. See, we honor God with our tithes and offerings. I think it's, I'm going to use a strong word here. If you don't like it, please forgive me. <laughs> but I think it's hypocritical to say, I honor the Lord and you don't give to him as he's told you to give. Yeah. Could I say that when you honor one aspect of who he is, you dishonor right. everything about him? Partial obedience is the same as disobedience. We want our entire lives to line up with what God has said. But you know, we also honor God by honoring his son. Jesus said, the father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the son, that all should honor the son just as they honor the father. He who does not honor the son does not honor the father who sent him. The authority of Jesus was not one that he usurped, but it was one that derived from the father's authority. That is why we cannot honor the father apart from honoring the son. We honor Jesus by living a life that glorifies God. We honor Jesus by believing what he taught us. Failure to live a life of obedience to his teachings is a failure to honor him. And if we fail to honor Jesus, Jesus said you're also failing to honor the father. I want to share with you briefly a reason we may fail to honor God as we should. And it's a reason, church, that we can easily miss. Jesus said, a prophet is without honor in his own country. He's without honor among his own relatives and in his own house. He spoke those words because when he went back to his hometown, the people who knew him did not honor him. As he began to teach in the synagogues, 
Many of those who heard him were astonished. And they said, where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which, which is given to him that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Josie and Judas and, 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 and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And the Bible says they were offended at him. A prophet is not honored in his own family, among his relatives, in his own hometown, because of familiarity. People we're the closest to will at times be the people we have the most difficulty honoring because of our knowledge of them. So could it be, church, that our familiarity with God causes us at times to not honor him as we should? Yeah. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. We should, we should get as close to the Lord as possible, and we should become as familiar with him as we can. But we cannot let that closeness cause us to become too comfortable and create in us a mindset that does not honor the Lord because we know him. A popular phrase that we often hear quoted is familiarity breeds contempt. What this means is extensive knowledge of or close association with someone or something leads to a loss of respect for them or for it. Let us draw close to God as, as close as we possibly can. Let, let's, get, let's get to know him and everything we can about him. But as we do, let's not lose sight of who he is, of what he has done, and of what he's capable of doing. Do not let your familiarity with God cause you to dishonor him. And the best way to do that is to live in obedience to what he requires of you. Live as Jesus lived. Philippians 2 verse 6 says, Jesus, who being in the very nature with God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. In other words, Jesus did not allow his knowledge, his position, his relationship with God to cause him to dishonor God as the one who is supreme. Point number two, honor isn't cheap. Showing or giving honor is most likely going to cost you something. Creating a culture of honor means that you have to take some things that you may be comfortable with in your life and trade them for the things of God. A lot of times disappointments in life can cause us to question God's promises and lose sight of what he's doing in our life. But we must remember that we serve a faithful God through the good and through the bad. That's right. That's right. To honor God, we have to trade our doubts in him for trust in him. Yes. To honor all people, you're going to have to let go of some things like offenses, yes. secondhand offenses, yes. selfish pride, and anything that would cause you to not show honor to others like you should. That's right. Unfortunately... Dishonoring people has become a comedy. Social media, things like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, has made it easy to dishonor and devalue others. But I encourage you, don't drink the Kool-Aid. In the world we live in today, we often hear people say things like, I'm living my best life. But I promise you aren't living your best life if you aren't able to honor those around you, right. that, those that you come into contact every day, yes. and living as God would have you to live. Right. Don't allow secondhand offenses and the opinions of others to keep you from honoring people like you should. Yes. Sometimes we allow those close to us to talk negatively about someone else, mm -hmm. and before we know it, we are carrying someone else's offense. Right. Amen. 
We've got to stop it. It's absolutely toxic. And when we start carrying hatred in our heart for someone who did nothing to us, it's crazy. We must be able to look past all of that and honor people as God would have us to. To honor people, we must also let go sometimes of our own opinions. Stop deciding on whether or not to honor people based off of your expectations of what their life should look like. God made us all unique. We're all different. We all have value and we all have our own path that we have to walk. We're all different, yet God values and loves each and every single one of us. And we must seek to love others and honor others as God would have us to. Proverbs 15, 33 says, the fear of the Lord is instruction and wisdom and humility comes before honor. Proverbs 29, 23 says, one's pride will bring him low, but he who is lowly in spirit will obtain honor. I believe all of us, it's in our human nature that we all want to be shown honor. But we have to remember giving and receiving honor go hand in hand. Yes. If you want to receive honor, you must give honor to others. If you want to receive honor, you have to trade in some selfish pride and embrace humility. Humility comes before honor. And I believe that's a two way street. Listen, if you're going to honor others the way you should, you must humble yourselves. And if you're going to receive the honor from others and have God in it, you must humble yourself. Mm -hmm. Humility comes before honor. Point number three. Honor the least among us. Honor the least among us. There's a natural tendency to show honor to the people we admire the most. But based on today's text, we're to give the highest honor to the least among us. First Corinthians 12, 23. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, which we think Let me read. Let me let me me reword that for you. Those members of the body, which you think Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be less honorable, on those you ought to bestow to bestow greater honor. And verse twenty four says, "But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it." So even God looks at the body and he said, this part of the body is a part that naturally lacks honor. So I'm going to give it honor. Yeah. We're to give honor to the least among us. The ones we think to be less honorable, we're to give greater honor to. Living with the we're living with that mindset, living with that way of thinking will help us overcome the challenge of not honoring all men. Do you believe what Peter said? We're to honor all men. When we live with this mindset, it helps us to overcome that challenge you may have to not honor all men. When we as a church, when we go out of our way to show honor and respect for the least of those among us, we will find ourselves operating at a very high level as the body of Christ. We start to look like a body that is complete, a body that is whole, a body that is wanting nothing. Do you think about something? Everyone to think about this. If everyone in this church, Restoration Church, if everyone in this church felt respected, If everyone in this church felt honored, if they felt accepted, 
Can you imagine the energy and the efforts that will be exerted here? When the least among us is built up, we're all built up. Strengthen the weakest link and the whole chain becomes stronger. What Paul is saying in this text is the body of Christ would not experience the fullness of its existence until the weakest member in it is built up and edified through honor. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to get this. Because I want you to understand the role you play in this. If you in any way is showing disrespect or dishonor for anyone that's in this church, you are weakening this church. Those who, who are leaders in this church that serve closest to me they understand that's one thing Pastor Huey would not tolerate. And that is your mistreatment or your disrespect for other people. Now, if I don't know about it, I can't do nothing about it. So if you're being dishonored or disrespected in this church by anyone in leadership, please let me know. Because I, I, I listen, I will not tolerate that. Because I understand what Paul is saying here. When every one of us is built up, when every one of us feel honored, when each one of us feel edified, we bring something to the church that makes the whole better. And I want us to be the best that we can be. When we honor the least among us, we strengthen the entire fellowship. And when this church is strengthened, the whole body of Christ becomes better. So let's go out of our way. I want you to go out of your way to honor everyone that is in this place. For when the least among us is honored, we all prosper from it. Paul goes on to say in verse 24, God composed the body in such a way that greater honor is given to that, to that part which lacks it. Now, remember, he's comparing the body of Christ to our natural body. And what he's saying is this. Just as every part of your natural body is important and has been designed to show respect for the for the part that that lacks that respect. So is the body of Christ. Give you an example. Break your little finger and see how the rest of your body feels about it. <laughs> Take a hammer. Put that finger down and just, just smack it really hard. Oh, it's just a little finger. It doesn't matter. See what the rest of your body think about you when you do that. <laughs> Listen, let your appendix rupture and do nothing about it and see how it affects the rest of your body. Let your gallbladder flare up and become inflamed and ignore it and see how it throws off everything else. Yeah. We know the heart is important, don't we? Yes. We know our lungs are important. Our kidney, our liver, our eyes, our ears, our mouth, etc. So we honor and we protect them. But if you neglect the parts that lack that outer honor, it can be devastating to the whole. Based on Paul's comparison of the body of Christ, there are two common errors that we must avoid. Two things. Number one, we cannot become too proud of our own abilities. We cannot become too proud of who we are. We cannot become too proud of our special place in the church. And show a lack of respect for others. And the second thing is, we cannot think about others having nothing to do with the body. We cannot see them in that way. We cannot look at someone and say, oh man, they, they bring nothing to this body. No, no, no. Paul said everyone brings something to the body. So instead of us comparing ourselves to one another, what if we used our different gifts together to spread the love of God to all, starting with those whom we see as the least among us. 
Point number four is be intentional. We must be intentional to show other to, to show honor to others. But what does that look like? Honor looks like speaking kindly and respectfully to others. And yes, even those who you disagree with. Yes. We see you on Facebook. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> honor looks like looking people in the eyes when they speak to you. Honor looks like pointing out people's strengths yeah. instead of making fun of their weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah. Honor looks like celebrating people's wins and not yeah. focusing on their failures. Yeah. Yeah. Honor looks like seeing people's future and not condemning them because of their past. Yeah. 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 Honor looks like prayerfully, faithfully, praying for those in a position of authority and our leaders, yeah. Yeah. the ones that are over us, instead of praying on their downfall. Yes. And the list could seriously go on. Yes. Can you imagine what this world would look like if everyone decided to honor all people mm. and not just those who look like us, mm. who talk like us, who yes. act like us? Yes. And yes, even those who have hurt us. Yes. To intentionally honor, we must first deal with some unforgiveness in our heart. Romans 12, 14 through 21 says, bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God would bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see that you are honorable. Yes. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Mm. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. Yes. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. Yes. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Yes. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Mm. Don't let evil, evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Yes. Yes. And I'm going to get really personal with you guys, so I'm going to come down on the floor because I just feel like sometimes, you know, I don't want you guys to think that because people are up here preaching that they're better than anybody. A few months ago, I had to deal with some unforgiveness in my heart. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm going to get emotional. Earlier this year, Ariel was preaching, and in part of her sermon, she talked about unforgiveness. And in that sermon, I realized I was harboring unforgiveness towards someone that I had dated in high school. And just a side note for any teenagers in the room, any young adults, use wisdom in who you decide to date. Listen to your parents. Pray. <laughs> <laughs> Pray about who God would have you to date. If, you're, if your parents allow you to date, that is fine, but please use wisdom and listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling you because it could save you a lot of headache and a heartache that you could be dealing with for years. Yeah. In Ariel's sermon, I thought back to this past fall when my husband had his 10-year class reunion, and I knew I was going to be face-to-face -face with this guy that I had dated in high school. And he was somebody who I hadn't seen or spoken to in years. And when I thought back to this event, I thought back to this class reunion, I remembered exactly how I felt leading up to that event. And I was so proud of myself. I went and got the best looking outfit I could find. I wanted him to see me. I wanted him to know how successful my marriage was. I wanted him to know how successful I was. But that was all pride. I would say things to my husband like, man, I hope that he is so unsuccessful in life. I hope he is miserable for how he treated me. I really meant it. He treated me so bad. 
I was dealing with so much selfish pride. And when we arrived to the class reunion, Gary and I got there first. Um, and we were all sitting at a table. And when he walked in that room, I got up. <laughs> I walked over to where he was and I greeted him to make sure that he saw me. <laughs> I did. <laughs> A lot of others in the room, all of our friends, they knew that I had dated this guy. They knew the history that we had. And to others looking at us, it may have seemed like I had come a long way and that I had dealt with the unforgiveness in my heart, but it was so fake. Wow. <laughs> Don't fake forgiveness for those around you because you're not hurting anybody but yourself. After Arielle finished her sermon, I thought back to that event and exactly how unforgiving and how selfish I was. And God spoke to me. And he told me to get on my face and to pray a prayer of blessing over him and his family and his children that are going to come over his finances. And in that moment, I wept and I repented and I prayed the most powerful God-given prayer I've ever prayed in my whole entire life. And when I finished praying, I got up and I knew immediately the unforgiveness had left me because I no longer wished Ill, Ill feelings toward him. I no longer prayed on his downfall. The definition of contempt is the feeling that a person is beneath consideration worthless or deserving of scorn. Yes. And I realized that day that I had been holding him in contempt in my heart for years. I had to come to a place of true forgiveness before I could honor him as God would have me to. And I think it's all important that we all ask ourselves today, are you holding someone in contempt in your heart that you should be showing honor to. When we choose to deal with our unforgiveness and forgive those who hurt us, we're doing the one, of, one of the most honorable things that we can do because you're choosing love over revenge. You're choosing love over vengeance. When we choose to deal with our unforgiveness, we're also showing honor to God. God sent his only son to die on the cross to forgive us of all of our sins and we have to forgive others. Being intentional to honor God and others ultimately creates a culture of honor. And just imagine what this world could look like if we decided to be intentional. Yes. What has or what is robbing you of the honor you should be giving to others? Maybe it's hurt. Maybe it's unforgiveness. Maybe it's expectations you had. And remember Jesus said, uh, Prophet is with, with, is with honor except in his own home, among his own family, in his own country. It is often those closest to us whom we dishonor the most. Or it's those that are the least among us. Because we see them as someone who's not to be honored. What if each one of us in this room made a decision right now that God's starting with me. I want to live a life of honor that glorifies you. I'm going to honor those, God. I'm going to honor all men because your word tells me to. And I'm especially going to work on honoring those whom I have failed to show honor to in the past. What if we chose to honor those who've hurt us, who've disappointed us, 